And it's ours for the simple expedient of choosing the bean chili instead of the beef chili. You know, this is free to everybody if we're just adopting a whole food plant-based diet. And, and not just heart arteries open up, the arteries all over the body open up much to the delight of people at home. Um, I'm sure this woman is really thrilled that the retinal arteries in his eyes uh, are now uh, more open, uh, as are the renal arteries to his kidneys, <laughs> as well as other organ, other arteries to other organs in the body. Uh, blood flow is life. And as all the arteries in the body open up, um, the vital forces are restored to tissues all over the body. There is now getting to be a growing uh, literature substantiating the reversibility of atherosclerotic clogging of the arteries. I'm going to show you a number of slides um, listing these studies. And because this talk is being recorded, uh, I'm going to invite you to go back, replay it, and stop the video at these kinds of slides to see the actual studies and look them up if you want to learn more uh, about this revolution in medicine, disease reversal through plant-based nutrition. So angina claudication, uh, which is uh, clogged arteries in the arms and legs, certainly get better. Uh, but uh, so does high blood pressure, congestive heart failures. People get leaner and their heart muscle uh, perfusion gets better. Heart failure can get better. Kidney failure gets better, especially as relief from those high protein diets uh, takes effect. <clears throat> uh, and it forces the doctor to learn a skill that no one mentioned to me in medical school called de-prescribing. There's an art to getting people off these potent medications, uh, statins and high blood pressure pills, uh, but it's easy to learn and you know, doctors need to become skilled in de-prescribing uh, these cardiac and blood vessel medications, all medications actually. Uh, I invite my patients to go to my website, drglab.com, click on answers and download my health supporting eating plan, where I take folks uh, through a day of healthy eating and a diet plan they can base their entire food intake around. I'll invite you viewers of this presentation uh, to download this uh, five-page uh, handout. It's, it's full of recommendations for videos and articles and, uh, and uh, aids to uh, help in this transition. So uh, disease reversal in, in, in artery disease is certainly possible. Same in type 2 diabetes, which is the most common source of, uh, most common variety of diabetes. Uh, we're not talking about type 1 where the pancreas is not putting out insulin any longer, but type 2 diabetes uh, where the pancreas is putting out lots of insulin, but the insulin isn't working well. Why is that happening? The reason, the mechanism behind type 2 diabetes was demonstrated way back in 1927 uh, by Dr. Sweeney at Yale. Now, when you ask most people, what's the problem with diabetes and how do you control it? Oh, the word that comes out, sugar, sugar, it's from eating too much sugar and you got to eat a low sugar diet. Those carbs are bad. Oh, avoid those carbs because they give you diabetes. Well, Dr. Sweeney uh, demonstrated something very different. Uh, what did he say? What did he do? Uh, he took his medical student, he taught at Yale, and he divided the medical students, they were all young men at that time, and divided them up into two groups. One group he put on a high-carbohydrate diet for 48 hours, for two solid days. These young men ate nothing but sugar, candy, pastry, white bread, baked potatoes, syrup, bananas, rice, and oatmeal. This was a high-carb diet for two solid days. Well, that, that should be enough to give anyone a diabetic curve. Well, after 48 hours, two days of eating this high-carb diet, uh, he gave each of them a drink with 100 grams of sugar or glucose in it, and two hours later, checked their blood sugar to see what their body did with it. Well, lo and behold, every one of these young men who had been eating for two days of atrociously high carbohydrate diet, every one of them, their, after two hours, their blood sugar was back down well below 120. There was in the 115 or lower range. They were basically non-diabetic. Uh, over half of them, uh, their diabetes, their blood sugar was in the 100 uh, milligrams percent uh, range or lower. Certainly no diabetes was caused by the uh, high sugar diet. But the other half of his medical students, he put them on a high fat diet for two days. They ate nothing but olive oil, butter, mayonnaise with egg yolk and 20% cream for two days. 
He then gave these young men the same 100 gram glucose drink. Two hours later, drew their blood sugar, and every one of these young men had blood sugars well in the diabetic range. Uh, that's you know, above now above 115, 120. That puts you in diabetic range. Every one of these young men on a high fat diet were in that diabetic range. Their insulin receptors were so clogged up with fat. Now, of course, when they went back to their standard diet, uh, these uh, depending on what they ate, uh, this was not permanent. Their blood, their insulin uh, function reverted to as normal as it could, depending on how much fat these young folks were eating. Uh, but it wasn't the sugar, it was the fat in their diet that clogged their insulin receptors. Here it is uh, uh, schematically, here is a muscle cell, it burns glucose, uh, you eat an apple and the sugar shows up in the blood. Uh, this uh, prompts the, the pancreas to put out insulin, which engages the insulin receptors that sends a message through enzymes to the surface of the uh, cells, letting say, hey, let that sugar into the mitochondria so we can burn it. That's what's supposed to happen. But if the person's been keeping their blood fatty week after week, month after month, all that fat has permeated into their muscle cells, their liver cells, it accumulates as intramyocellular lipid, that means in the muscle cell lipid, uh, and it clogs up the enzymes making the insulin receptors work. Now, we're going to talk more about this mechanism, but I just want to say this is not theoretical, this intramyocellular lipid. This is not a theory. Here's what it looks like under the light microscope. This is muscle. It's a striated muscle from an arm or leg. And uh, all this black stuff, this is this is fat in the muscle cell. This is intramyocellular lipid that should not be there. Here, this is under the light microscope. Here's what it looks like under the electron microscope. This is fat in the muscle cell that's poisoning the enzymes that make insulin work. Uh, and this is not theoretical. It's a real thing. So here you see the insulin receptors. Their enzymes are all clogged up. Uh, from the fat in their diet that they've been eating on a regular basis. And if the person, oh, and, and there's getting to be a growing literature about intramyocellular lipid causing insulin resistance. But if the person happens to have an obese abdomen, that adds another layer of insulin resistance. How? Because that fat in the abdomen wrapped, wrapped around their intestines is metabolically active. And this fat pumps out what are called inflammatory cytokines, interleukin-1, interleukin-6, and these promote inflammation throughout the body. It's called metabolic inflammation, these inflammatory cytokines. And uh, there's going to be a, a growing literature here uh, about obesity-related inflammation. Uh, people make this passionate plea, well, you're, you shouldn't be fat-shaming, you can be healthy, uh, if you, even though you're obese, the vast majority of folks with obese abdomens are walking around with high levels of inflammatory cytokines. It's called metabolic inflammation. And to, with most folks, obesity is a state of inflammation. And when you say you can be healthy with an obese body, uh, I'm far from convinced of that. I think inf obesity is a state of inflammation. And the, uh, uh, the literature certainly supports that. So here we are back in the muscle cell uh, the fats in the diet have worked their way into the cell as intramyocellular lipid. They're uh, tying up the enzymes on the inside of the cell that make insulin work. But here comes those inflammatory cytokines from the obese abdomen um, uh, interfering with the insulin receptors from the outside. No wonder so many obese people develop type 2 diabetes. Uh, their insulin receptors are clogged up and interfered with both on the inside and the outside. And that explains Dr. Sweeney's medical students and why the folks on the high carbohydrate diet did not develop a diabetic curve when the folks on the high fat diet did. And, and this happens rapidly within 48 hours. A high fat diet, you can see the effects all that fat has. Well, fortunately, this is called this talk is about disease reversal. This is a reversible disease as well. This, if one stays away, and this is symbolic, doesn't say uh, that the hamburger is the only problem here. It's all the uh, excessive fats in the diet, uh, and it doesn't mean the only thing you can eat is broccoli and tomatoes. This is symbolic for a diet based on whole plant foods. When one changes from the standard Western diet to the uh, to a whole food plant based diet. 
um, uh, the diabetes begins to go away. And here's uh, Dr. Barnard's classic studies uh, where they compared a low-fat plant-based diet to the standard diabetes diet. Uh, and uh, the, after the heavy animal fats are pulled out, um, the fats that are already in the muscle cell, the intramyocellular lipid, uh, gets oxidized, gets burned in the, by the mitochondria for fuel. And uh, so that frees up the enzymes inside the, uh, inside the insulin receptors. The, and the inflammatory cytokines fade away. And so the insulin receptors open up and the diabetes resolves. And they were working fine all the time before. Uh, they will work again. It's a reversible disease. Uh, and here's the results from Dr. Um, uh, Barnard's study. And the folks on the plant-based diet compared to the Diabetes Association diet that allows some meat and dairy. Uh, the folks on the plant-based diet experienced a greater improvement in their hemoglobin A1C. Uh, they lost more body weight. Their lipids improved more. Their, they spilled less protein in their urine. All the way around, their body uh, started healing beautifully on a diet of whole plant foods. And all of us who practice uh, plant-based uh, lifestyle medicine have patients like Jim. He used to be 100 pounds overweight. Again, here's that classic uh, overweight uh, person with type 2 diabetes. They're clogging up their insulin receptors from the inside the outside. He went whole food plant-based, lost the weight. And a year and a half later, uh, he's 100 pounds lighter and running marathons. And guess what else he lost? Uh, he lost his diabetes as well as his, that, all that excess body fat. It's a reversible disease. People need to know that. And again, forces the doctor to learn uh, the skill of deprescribing insulin and these hypoglycemic agents as well. Uh, there's getting to be a growing literature. If you're interested in this specifically, come back to this slide and check out uh, each of these studies showing the reversibility of, uh, of type 2 diabetes on a whole food plant-based diet. And in this age of Ozempic, and people are spending $1,000 a month for a, a uh, medication that can help them lose some weight, not in every one, and it carries many side effects uh, as well. When they're trying to force their body to do what happens naturally, automatically, on a diet of whole plant foods. As I mentioned earlier, a whole food plant-based diet, the food that's going down in, uh, in the, your stomach is mostly fiber and water. That's what fruits and vegetables are made of. <clears throat> and the fiber and water don't stick to you. They're excreted. <clears throat> so even though you're eating plenty of food, 